Oh my sweet Hadji Senior's 55th birthday, what a goal to win a game. Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo 92 and today we are back from the brand new video. Today is our video, we are here to talk about Rangers 2, Hibs 1, despite one of the worst refereeing performances I've ever seen since the last game versus Rangers. That's right, Bobby Madden was absolutely beeling when they had to blow the final whistle two minutes after the original added on time. But ladies and gentlemen, that does not matter at all as Rangers battled through everything in a crazy game of football to come away with three points. And I'll tell you something right now, it's certainly a relief to be able to sit here with a massive smile on my face and say that because for a large majority, especially of the first half, that certainly didn't seem to be the case. And I mean, it's only Rangers Football Club that could have you feeling like this. This is why I've got grey hairs at the age I am, ladies and gentlemen, and I'll be Richard Gear before the end of the season. It is just all over the place. You don't care what you're going to get from minute to minute from Rangers. Are they going to be good? Are they going to be bad? Are they going to be mince? Or are they going to be alright? What's absolutely mental to think about is through that 96 minutes, we were each of them. Honestly, because I say we started the game all right, we looked as if we were getting in the rhythm with the pass and it seemed to be a bit more pressure building up. We were going to be a bit more direct. Alfredo Morelos had a big chance earlier on to start the game off where he's got Ryan Kent actually there if he wants to try and pass it so Kent can have a shot and goal. But we all know for a fact whenever Alfredo Morelos gets near the goal, he's going to have a pop and he actually forces a very good save from Big Marciano once again. And yes, I'm actually saying again there, despite knowing full well we made a massive mistake in the last game at Easter Road where he kind of passed the ball to Ryan Kent and Ryan Kent finished it expertly. But I'm just looking at this goalkeeper and every single time I see him, he seems to make incredible save, incredible save, especially against Alfredo Morelos. And that was kind of the running theme through the night. But in saying that, we've also got a goalkeeper who's known to make a couple of very good saves now and again, and that actually perfectly transitions us into the second chance of the match, and I actually felt with Hibs very, very against the run of play, because we were sort of building all this positive momentum, again, playing all right, but Hibs, one or two passes down that left-hand side, gets inside the box, and within about seven yards out, force Alan McGregor into a very, very underrated save with his feet. Now, I don't know if it was that chance or a couple other very good possessions by Hibs where they were moving the ball pretty well, but it seems to just take the wind out of our sails and slow that all right start right down to a halt again. And we started today what we all hate to see, which is this back pass nonsense and from side to side. And during this lull from Rangers where we weren't trying to go forward, we weren't trying to split them open with any penetration passes, we were just sort of playing through the emotions yet again since coming back for the winter break. That actually gave Hibs a bit more belief in the game. They started to create a couple of other half chances, forcing set pieces. And eventually that is how they get the opener in this game. It is a free kick outside of the box after a rash challenge from George Edmondson. It gives Scott Allen the chance to whip a free ball into the box. And as much as we hate the laddie, he certainly has quality. And he showed that again with that set piece delivery. It's a great free kick. It just sort of gets flipped up in the air after a couple of ricochets. Stephen Whitaker actually jumps up as if he's Ken for Street Fighter, but unfortunately, so does Alan McGregor, who sort of flops to the ground, and that gives Hanlon the chance to tap it into an empty net. Now, I never reacted when the ball hit the back of the net, because I sat back and went, it's all right, it's a foul. There'll be a whistle in a second. Any second now. This is quite wide to allow them to celebrate this much before blowing it off Bobby Madden. <laughs> what you I was actually, spe I was honestly speechless that allowed this goal to stand because we've seen this type of challenge against goalkeepers with our own eyes and it always, always gets ruled a foul. Whether it's no foul or no, it always goes to the advantage of the goalkeeper, but in this case, it never. And I'm very, very interested to know what your thoughts and opinions are on that first goal for Hibs. Do you think it should have stood? And after seeing a couple of highlights and a couple of replays of the incident, I went, all right, Fair enough, but if that's standing, there's going to be a hell of a lot of goals, especially from set pieces, when someone likes to jump up against the goalkeeper that's going to be scored the rest of the season, if we see this wee consistency that's always thrown around by the SFA. But moving away from the goal, in fact, the goal maybe gave us the jolt up the arse that we kind of needed just to wake up a little bit from the slow, passive mindset. And we created a couple of half chances. The biggest one has obviously fallen at the feet of Scott Arfield, but as I continually say on this channel, there is nothing, and I mean nothing more frustrating than Scott Arfield in volleys, because it just doesn't work. And also, missed. And you're sitting back and you're thinking, right, 
They've scored through a potential BS call for the referee, right? We're playing crap again, but for a half chance to pull in, Scotty Arfield's missed his usual volley. All we're waiting on is a Golton free header to go over the bar, and we've completed Rangers bingo. But thankfully, there was no winter break bingo played the night, ladies and gentlemen. No, 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 because we actually pulled it back to 1 1 before we went into half time, and it came from a very, very unlikely player to say the very least. It came from the man who was a surprise to many to even be starting this game, and it was none other than Big George Edmondson. The redemption once again from one of our centre-halves making a mistake to being a goal scorer happens yet again in a 2-1 victory. But the finish itself, I can't even give it any justice because I originally was raging because Tavernier whips in a fantastic free kick of his own into the box, which I think George Edmondson should actually score with his head, but he fluffs it, and I'm like, how do you make, oh, what a goal, because the boss sort of ricochets and bounces, and when we're all just about to moan, he hits a half volley with his weak foot, and it's buried inside the bottom bread basket. And I didn't think the bottom corner is even called a bread basket. That's how confused I was. So thanks to Big Georgie's goal, we go into half time 1-1 one, one with Hibs and I actually put it on Twitter, how we start this setting half will tell us everything we need to know about this Rangers team. And thankfully, ladies and gentlemen, I've got a massive smile on my face because the way we started that setting half is everything because it shows that these players, they want it. Literally from the first time that ball was kicked, they started closing everything down. They started going for through passes. They started to hit long balls in behind the defences. The way we started that second half was the best we have looked since coming back for the winter break. Now, there has to be questions asked why we can't play like that and why we haven't played like that at any time since the winter break, but thankfully it was there when we needed it the day. Honestly, within about 10, 15 minutes of that second half, we had hit more forward passes and we had created more chances than we did in the entire first 45 minutes. We had Hadji coming very, very close to scoring a volley. That would be nice, wouldn't it? But the longer it goes without a goal, the more your arse starts to nip and starts to play the drums for Jumanji. And honestly, I was at peak Jumanji level when Aribo, from about four or five yards out, somehow hit a knockdown from a corner over the bar. It was mere, It was harder to hit it over the bar than it was to slap it into the back of the net. And that right there for me was peak because I didn't care where I was. And you start to think to yourself, right, there's been chances we're actually starting to play well, but the ball isn't going into the back of the net. And we've all seen this story before. But thankfully, there was one man on that park, literally from the first whistle to the last second before he was substituted off in the 89th minute that refused to allow this game to finish 1-1. He continued to try, he continued to inspire throughout the entire game, and in the 85th minute, he stepped up with an absolute screamer. The angle, he's got no right to score. He hits it first time with his right foot, which is originally his weaker foot. Again, he's not got a weak foot, ladies and gentlemen, and that little highlight right there shows you everything you need to know. It's an absolute incredible goal, and I'll tell you right now, there is not one other player on that park that can hit that volley on target. Never mind hit it in the back of the net. And you know something there, I've just realised I was actually too excited thinking about that goal, I just skipped right to it and went right beyond the build-up and how the ga the goal came about. Sorry, the ball eventually gets thrown out to the left-hand side to Scotty Arfield. He hits a header straight back into the mixer. Connor Golton rises above all, headers it on to Hadji and Hadji again with a simply incredible finish. Now before we finish up the game recap, there was another massive chance for Rangers as Morelos ran inside the box after turning Stevenson inside out, but again Rocky answers the call with a phenomenal save just to post, uh, push it at that beyond the post. But that's it ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, a game that had everything that showed you why you love football, but also why you hate football and honestly I'm done and dusty from a game perspective but again as we touched on right at the start of today's video the refereeing was absolutely shambolic not only should we have had a penalty on a foul on Ryan Kent but the fact that that man 84th minute didn't book Stevenson who literally put Alfredo Morelos in a German suplex like his name was Brock Lesnar and buckled a mare while Alfredo Morelos was gone by him with a football yellow card all day yellow card Bobby Madden somehow goes and speaks to beef individuals and waves them off. The same guy, by the way, 30 seconds later, comes in with a ridiculous slide challenge that actually sets up the goal, which is a fantastic little bit of justice for that man. But again, even for sliding in from behind on Hadji, the man didn't get a book. Bobby Madden, all over the place as pair. But honestly, I'm too happy to waste a single second thinking of that waste story. Tried his best to ruin a game of football, but he was not allowed as Rangers had a moment of quality and had a spark in his name. 
was Hadji. Now from the individual player performances, it was Hadji all day for me. Literally, he's my man in match. There's no one that came close. However, I do think Barisic had a very good game as well. He was involved in pretty much everything positive from a Rangers perspective. And I think the two centre-halves, despite Edmondson's rash challenge that led to the first goal for Hibs, both impacted the game massively. You had Edmondson with a goal and you've got Connor Golson with not only an assist, but so many interceptions and vital challenges as Hibs looked to hit on the break. Good result from Rangers. I actually said performance there, but I've had to cut myself in because it wasn't the greatest performance in the world, but it's a fantastic result and we'll take the three points all damn day. And with that being said, I'm officially done and dusted with today's video. Now it's time to hand over the reins to you guys. I want to know your thoughts and opinions on not only that performance, but that overall result as well. And while you guys are hopefully sharing your opinion, I will jump over to Twitter and here from the people. There's been 1,612 votes and there's still 43 minutes remaining. That is frightening nation. Thank you so much for getting involved. 2% votes for Ulla, 3% votes for Connor Goldson, 7% votes for BB, but the far and away winner with the biggest swing ever, even with people scoring hat-tricks, with 88% of the vote is your man. Hadji. And the first one comes in from Snake Harper and he writes in Hadji was the standout long before he got the winner and even with the embarrassing officiating tonight we got better and better the longer the game went on. Fully agree with that. JMK writes in Hadji was easily man of the match but it could have easily also gone to Borna Bear. Gary Stephen writes in Hadji you are the love of my life. Rossinator writes in Hadji is therefore a standout always seems to be looking for the ball or trying to take control of the game plus that finish. Ref's a joke as usual. Seen a better performance from the team tonight. Must be because our captain is back. Alex writes in, I definitely thought Hadji was the man of the match, was driving us forward all the time and he took his goal very, very well. Deacon Neal writes in, dogged performance. Hadji the standout despite Madden trying to hand it to Hibs. I'm looking forward to reading this one out. Alfred Comarelos, the man who absolutely idolises Hadji, who he was talking about him for so long before we were even linked. Well, he writes in, don't even list anyone else, CJ. Even without the goal, he was constantly the standout, showing for the ball constantly and making things happen. Kimberly writes in, Hadji for me, he is on fire. Can't wait to see more of him. Darren Davidson writes in, all I ask is consistency in the Scottish game. It's class when the refs do everything they can to stop us and fail, but FFS, it's becoming a bit of a joke. Lad gave their all and it ended in the right result. Our title shout isn't quite over yet. And the last one we'll read out in tonight's video actually comes from Gordon Gunn Gary and he writes in, welcome back Tav, we missed him, BB gave everything, Aribo missed a sitter, ref lost his whistle and cards, oh Haji, he's got awareness and recognises what's going on, I think the rest of the team will eventually see this and it'll be the key to unlocking some stubborn defences. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you've heard from the people, you've heard from myself, if you haven't done so already, you know what to do by now and as always, I've been CJ92, thank you so much for watching and Bye.